Hey everyone, and welcome to the second episode in my mini-series called Scratch Basics. Today, I will be going over the code tab, which is this tab right here, and kind of the main Scratch interface. I hope you guys are enjoying this super in-depth series type thing. My talking skills are out of this world. Also, please subscribe, or this little emoji will be sad. It's so easy just to subscribe. Don't judge. Emojis can't spell. Also like and drop a comment down below. Goodbye. So continuing on from where we left off last week, we need to figure out a way to go into a blank project. There are multiple ways of doing this. One of them is by clicking this create button and that will just create a blank project and put you in it. The other way is to go to my stuff, which you can do in this drop down. And if you aren't familiar with all these buttons that I'm showing you, check out my last video in Scratch Basics because I went over all of this stuff except for this what's happening. I forgot to mention that last episode and that's just what people you are following are doing. For instance, I'm following Griff Patch and Griff Patch is following this thing. Like I was saying, go to my stuff and now click new project. But I already have a project called Scratch Basics. It's at the very top, but if I click on the thumbnail of it, it's going to bring me to this page. But if I click see inside, it'll take me to the editor. So now that you know how to create a project, let's go over the interface. Now upon entering, it may seem a little overwhelming because there's a lot of cool things to do. Let's start at the top with the ribbon bar. This whole blue bar is the ribbon bar. Very top left is the scratch logo. It just takes you to the main page, just like I showed last episode. Next, we have this world thing. It allows you to change the language of the editor. Next we have file. New allows you to create a brand new project. If I click on it, boom, it just brings me into an untitled project. The next button is save now, which saves your project. Quick tip, you can also do control S for saving it. As you can see, I'm just clicking it right now. Next we have save as copy. Now this is super cool because say you have a bunch of code in here and you're wanting to make a huge change, but you're scared it's gonna break it. Well, all you need to do is click save as copy and and now you can see that it says scratch basics copy and all the code and everything is the same. But if I go out, there's two projects now, the scratch basics copy and scratch basic. The very next button is load from your computer, which I'll go over in a sec actually. You need to first learn the save to your computer. So if I click save to my computer, right there, it just downloads scratch basics, which is the name, .sb3. Now an sb3 is scratch's file extension. So if you see an sb3 file, you know that it is a a scratch project. So if I go to the downloads folder, you can see that I have this scratch basics file right here and it's an SB3. Now if I go ahead and make a new project, I can click file and then load. It will open up a file explorer. So I'll go to my downloads, click on my scratch basics and click open. Now it'll say, are you sure you want to replace all the contents of the current project with that file? If you click OK, there you go. Look at that. It has scratch basics, the name there, and that's actually the only thing that's different, but it loaded up our project. The other reason this is useful is if you're using Scratch Desktop, you have to use it this way because you can't just do Control S. You have to actually save it as a file to your computer. But I am on the website version right now, so I can just click save and it saves it to their cloud. The next button is called tutorials. So if I click on that, here are a bunch of tutorials that are useful when you're very first starting out. So here are all the tabs up here. You can filter it out. It is super useful for when you're first starting out. So if I go ahead and click add a sprite, you can see that there's pop-up comes up and it walks me through the steps of adding a sprite. So that is super cool. Next we have the title, which is the name of the project. You can change this here. Next is a dangerous button called the share button. The reason it's dangerous is once you click this, it is shared to the world. So just be careful when you're up here to not accidentally click this. Next, we have C project page, which brings you to this page that I showed in the last episode where you can also change the title, the instructions, and the credits. So this is what it would look like for other people. Now we have this button that's a shortcut to the My Stuff page, and then your icon, which is the same as on the home screen. You can go to My Profile, My Stuff, Account Settings, and then sign out at the bottom. Okay, so now that we have the top ribbon bar done, let's go ahead and 
move down a bit. Next, we have all these tabs here. There are three tabs, code, cost, and then sound. But in this episode, I'm just going to be covering the code tab. Right here is the block palette. So these are all of the blocks in Scratch. And you can just scroll up and down with your mouse wheel. And a tip here is say I'm at motion. Instead of having to scroll all the way down to variables, all I have to do is click on the tab over here. So if I click on motion, Boom, it just scrolls over there. So that is a way to save time. Moving on, we have the code area, which is all of this. So it's kind of hard to see because we have no code in there, but if we go ahead and just pull out code here, you can see that by clicking, I can move around. I can also use my scroll wheel to move up and then hold shift scroll wheel to move right and left. I can click on these plus and minuses in the bottom left corner to zoom in and out of code. That way you can move around easier. Equal resets the zoom. And another quick tip is if you hold control and then mouse wheel, you can zoom in easier. And another feature is if you right click, one of them is undo. So if I go ahead and like delete that right there, I can right click and do undo. And now that's back. There's also a redo. So say I was like, wait, no. I don't want to undo that. I want to delete it again. I can click redo and it's gone. If you have multiple blocks and you want them to be lined up, you can click clean up blocks and there you go. It lines them all up. And last but not least, say you have a ton of code that you just want to get rid of. You can right click and click this delete 11 blocks. It'll say however many blocks you have. And then it'll say delete all blocks and you can click cancel if you didn't mean to. But if you click OK, it deletes every block in that sprite. So now let's move over to the stage. So over here is the stage, this kind of whole area. So the first button is the green flag and this will run your project. So in the events section of the block palette, if we pull out a win green flag click hat block this will run any code under it when this button is clicked gonna make a simple script so when green flag clicked go to random position if i click the green flag it runs that script and you can see it turns yellow when it runs it and our cat goes to a random position so you can see that this is all working properly so that is how that works another note is any code in the code area can be run by just clicking on it so for instance if I want to make this cat go to x50, y0, I can click on that to make it go there. Now, this is an editor exclusive though, because if you go to the actual project page where people will be playing it, there's no button there. So you'll want to make it work with when green flag clicked. The stop button stops all forever loops and repeat and tells and all of that stuff. So it'll just stop every running script. So say we have when green flag clicked forever, change my variable by one. So what this is doing is it saying when I click this flag and start the project forever change this variable by one so we go ahead and start this project there you go it goes really quick here and if we click stop it immediately stops that forever loop. and if we go again you can see that it's yellow because it's running forever and then we stop it moving to the right we have this button which makes the stage into a baby stage or a big stage this button full screens it I do this a lot in my videos so that way you can get a close-up view of your games and then this is your actual view area that where you can see your game so this is the same thing right here as this it's just in a different spot next we have the sprite pane so I'm just going to add a new sprites and you can see that when I click on them the values change this is the information about that sprite so if I go ahead and click on it the first thing you'll notice is that it makes a highlight where it is on screen so that's handy to find your sprite so the first one is a name and it will update down here so this is a quick way to see what it is named then we have the exposition of it now we have this show you can go ahead and just show and hide that which is the same functionality as these show and hide blocks next we have size 100 is default but say i want it to be 250 okay now we have a ginormous cat then last but not least we have direction at the very top is our direction so 90 is to the right zero is pointing up negative 90 is to the left and 180 is down and then then down here are some rotation styles. So this is all around. Basically, this will let you rotate 360 degrees. The next one is left, right. If it is on this side of the direction, it'll point to the right. Otherwise, it'll point to the left. And it'll also flip it. So that way, it won't be upside down. So this is useful for characters and stuff like that. Last but not least, we have don't rotate. So this locks the visual rotation, but our rotation is still actually turning. You can see that the direction says negative 110. Our cat is just locked at 90. One important thing is that the scripting is 
specific to that sprite. If I add a when green flag clicked forever broadcast message one and I move to the short sprite, you can see that there is zero blocks here. So it is specific for that sprite. So that is why it's cool because you can have lots of different sprites that do different things. And the last kind of thing is a right click over here. You can export the sprite as a dot sprite three and I'll go over what this is useful for in a minute. There is duplicate which makes a exact copy of that sprite. So if I have a code in this sprite and it's when green flag clicked I duplicate this and makes another one called we2 and it has the same code in there and the last one is the delete button which is the same as clicking this trash can okay so moving a little bit down to the bottom of the sprite pane we have choose a sprite so this is where you can make new sprites so the first option is choose a sprite so if you click on this you'll be brought to scratch's image library and here you can narrow it down by different tags or you can even look up specific things for instance let's go ahead and go to food I like food and choose a donut that looks good and now if we click on it it imports a donut sprite that they've already made into our library the next option is paint a sprite I'm just gonna show you what this does but I'm not gonna go in detail because this is for next episode which is the costume page so if you click on this this creates a blank sprite that you can design the costume for so this is how I make my custom art then I have surprise which basically imports a random sprite from that sprite library I showed you. So if I click on that a few times, you can see I got a shark, a hatchling, and a guitar, electric, and a fishbowl. And last but not least, you have upload a sprite. So here's where the dot sprite 3 comes in handy. So right here is that sprite, and I click open, and it imports that sprite with all of the costumes, sounds, and code, but I didn't actually put any code in there. You can also upload PNG images. Click open open there you go now I have a PNG image in my scratch project look at that here are all of the types you can upload you can upload JPEGs you can even upload SVGs and GIFs so if you want an animated sprite in the last tab is the stage tab so this is a fixed sprite that you cannot delete or you cannot move around you can see that the motion section in the blocks is gone but this is like the very background of your project so you can put coding in here and it's specific to the background I don't really use this too often because you can't layer it as you can see here there's no like go to front or anything like that and then this button is the same exact thing as a sprite but it's for the backdrop so choose a backdrop is their library of backdrop and then the next one is paint so that's how you can make a custom one and there's a surprise so that imports a surprise background and then upload which allows you to upload your own images so moving to the very bottom of the screen we have backpack so this is where you can store your scripts and sprites i made a whole entire video about this so make sure you go check that out the link will be in the description but it is just a place where you can pull in chunks of code it doesn't just have to be one so if say i have this advanced extremely long code block that's like insane and i want to use it in my project i click and drag it into there and now i can just pull that into any project it'll be there for everywhere like i said i made an in-depth video about that and the very last button in this interface is this button right here that looks like a plus sign. If I click on that, this says choose an extension. So basically, this is extensions you can add to your Scratch project. Some common ones are text to speech, translate, pin, and music, but there's also more advanced ones that I've never used like Makey Makey. I've really never used some of these. But if I go ahead and click pin, it will add a new block section called pin, and this is a bunch of new blocks that you can use. So that was the last button. I want to show you how this works work. So in the code area, it starts with, they're called hat blocks. All of these ones with like the lump on top will play on a certain condition. So this one is when the flag is clicked. This one is when this specific sprite is clicked. So whenever I click on this cat, and this one is when I receive this message. So I would have to click broadcast message and then this would receive it. But that's more complex. So if I go ahead and do when green flag clicked set size to 100, it's going to say, okay, so once I click the flag, I'm going to set the size to 100. So say I put a show in here, when is it going to do all this? It goes from top to bottom. So it's going to say, okay, the flag is clicked, it's going to set it to 100%, then once it's done, it'll show. But don't worry, it's instantaneous. Then we're going to go to the front layer to make sure it's not behind anything, and let's test this out. So if we click the flag, there you go, it resets the size, shows it, and goes to front. Pull out a go-to block, which is in the motion section, and the categories kind of make sense. Every 
everything that is movement based is in the motion everything that is with the costumes and looks is in the looks and all of these blocks with this box in there with the drop down you can choose different inputs i can do go to mouse pointer or if i had another sprite I can do go to sprite one so there's many things you can do but i'm gonna go to random position now if i do that every time i click the flag it'll go to a random position a really useful section is the control tab i'm gonna go ahead and pull out a forever loop and then a turn 15 degrees it'll set its size show go to front and go to random spot then it will forever turn 15 degrees now we have this cat going to random spot on screen and turning around then you can start adding input so in the control there's an if statement which checks for a condition and it's kind of a shape based program because in sensing this key space press you can see it's a hexagon and when we hover over it it turns white and then if we plop it in there now this right here is checking if the space is pressed so if we go ahead and put that in there and now we do move 10 steps every time we press space it'll move 10 steps in whatever direction it is so it's kind of crazy but another note is if you click on most blocks it will give you an output this is a key space press right now it's false if i press space you can see if i click it it sets it to true i want to thank you all so much for watching if you did enjoy this episode make sure to drop a like and subscribe but anyway this has been owen and i am out